click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in today's session we are going to study about a lead silver system. A lead silver system is a two component system. It is made up of two components. The first is lead and the second is silver. In today's session we will study the different phases of it, how components and phases affect the degrees of freedom of it and we will apply the phase rule to the entire system. Lead silver system part 1. This system has two components. Now why do we say two components? Because both the components are given over here already. We have lead as one of the component and silver as the second component. And four phases. Now we need to understand why are we saying four phases over here. Generally two components can have n number of phases. If both the components are solid, it will become one phase that is both of them are solid. If both components are liquid, again it will become one phase, both of them liquid. If one is solid, one is liquid, then it becomes a two-phase system. But over here we are trying to say that it is a four-phase system. So let us understand how the four phases occur. The first phase they are saying is solid AG. Now what is AG? AG is silver. So I take solid silver over here. The second one is solid lead. The third is solution of molten silver and lead. So now over here both of them are in liquid phase. And the fourth phase is the vapor phase. So what happens over here is the first phase is solid of AG, the second phase is the solid of lead, third is both of them are in its liquid form, fourth is both of them are in its gaseous form. So I am getting all the three phases solids, liquids and gases over here but the fourth phase is why because there are solids of two components, solid of PB, solid of AG, liquid of both of them and gaseous phase of both of them. Thus this becomes a two component and four phase system. And the, all the four phases are of those two components. But the boiling point of silver and lead being considerably high, the vapor phase is practically absent. Now of course lead and silver both of them are extremely strong elements over here. We have seen silver in our day to day life and we have always seen it in its solid form. It is possible to get the solid form of silver into its liquid form by melting it at extremely high temperatures. But what about its gaseous form? Gaseous form is practically impossible. If you melt the solid silver, that is the silver metal, from a solid form, it goes back to its liquid form. But once it goes to the liquid form, you have to heat it to a great extent to extreme high temperatures to make sure that that liquid form goes into its gaseous form. Those high temperatures are practically unattainable. And that's the reason why over here we can neglect the gaseous form. It is practically absent. That means while doing the experiment or by just heating AG, we know that it won't be there. But theoretically that form is there. So over here we consider it into our four phase system. We consider the vapor phase but it is practically absent. The same thing is with lead, plumbum. Plumbum also from solid state to liquid state. It is very difficult for us to see plumbum or lead even in its liquid state because it's that strong of an element. But once it attains the liquid state, it is practically impossible to go to that high levels of temperature and high degrees of temperature to convert that liquid state of lead into its gaseous form or vaporized form of it. And so the vapor form that is fourth form over here can be neglected as it is negligible. The pressure has no effect on the equilibrium so the system can be conveniently represented by temperature and concentration. So over here we also have another thing to understand over here. The three dimensions that are variable are temperature, pressure and concentration. These are the three dimensions on which we have degrees of freedom. What exactly is degree of freedom? Degree of freedom is the number of variables we can vary and those variables are three in each and every system. The first is temperature, second is pressure and third is the concentration. Either we can vary the temperature, that is 1 degree of freedom if we keep both of the others constant. If I vary two things, that is temperature and pressure together, this becomes my 2 degrees of freedom. Why? Because I have two variables over here and I am varying both of them and I am keeping third one as constant. But if I vary all the three things, that is I am varying the temperature, I am varying the pressure, I am also varying the concentration. What do you mean by varying it? It's just changing it. Either you can increase it or you can decrease it as you want. Just by changing any of these three things, I can change the degrees of freedom. But what over here they are saying in this particular system is that you can change only two dimensions. Those two dimensions are temperature and concentration. 
change of pressure is not showing any effect on the system. If the change of pressure is not showing any effect on the system, that means it cannot be varied. Since we do not have pressure varying on it, we will have only two variables that is temperature and concentration. Let us see a graph on it. So over here we have a graph on the lead and silver system. This graph consists of two axes. The first is my x axis that is the percentage composition. Percentage composition may also be known as concentration of different products. And the second over here is temperature. So the x axis is concentration the y-axis is temperature it has certain curves such as these we'll study these in detail but over here what I'm trying to say or make a point is in the graph we are just studying two things concentration and temperature because we can vary the concentration we can vary the temperature with respect to time but we cannot vary pressure at all because pressure itself has no power on the system we have also studied another thing that if out of the three dimension one of them is missing or one of them is definite and cannot define the system and we are just left with two dimensions we do not use the normal phase rule we use the condensed phase rule also known as the reduced phase rule and this phase rule has one property the condensed phase rule or the reduced phase rule will always be one number lower to my normal phase rule what is my normal phase rule f is equals to c minus p plus 2 but over here in my condensed form I will write f is equals to c minus p plus 1 the normal phase rule is f is equals to c minus p plus 2 but over here I am not going to put 2, I am just going to put 1 because I want my new system that is this system which does not have pressure in it to have 1 degree of freedom less than all other systems. So this becomes f is equals to c minus p plus 1. We already know the number of components that is 2 so this becomes f is equals to c minus p plus 2 but instead of c I can just put 2 because there are 2 components so it will become 2 minus p plus 1, 2 plus 1 is 3 so it becomes 3 minus p. So degrees of freedom f is nothing but 3 minus p. When a system containing two phases and two components. Now when we look at this system we have two components. Those two components are lead and silver. What about the two phases over here they have given the phases either solid and liquid. Then the solid liquid equilibrium has practically no gas phase. Why? Because if it has two phases it is solid and liquid then how will I have the gas phase of it? And the effect of pressure is very small or negligible. So what is this system? This system is extremely different from all other systems. First, we said that it is solid, liquid and gaseous phase. Then we said that this gaseous phase does not exist because for lead and silver, the gaseous phase is practically impossible. So I am just removing one of the phase out of it. I also said that pressure is not applicable over here. That means I am removing one degree of freedom out of it. One of the phase is also removed, one of the degrees of freedom is also removed. We have not seen such systems before. Before we have just seen systems wherein one of the three dimensions of degree of freedom will not be there and we will just use the reduced phase rule over here. But over here in this system we are also removing a phase, we are also removing one of the degrees of freedom. That means we have removed the gaseous phase and we have removed the pressure from the degrees of freedom. Then it is necessary to take into account the remaining variables that is temperature, and concentration because over here we do not have a choice over here we are having so many few options that means the phases are reduced already the degrees of freedom are also reduced already so whatever we have now we have to take account of that and we have to make sure we plot them properly to get the results such a solid liquid system with the gas phase absent is called as condensed system. It is also called as a reduced system. And for that we use a condensed phase rule or a reduced phase rule. The experimental measurements of temperature and concentration in the condensed system are usually carried under atmospheric pressure. Why do we carry this under atmospheric pressure? Because that is the normal pressure we have. We do not have to either increase the pressure or decrease the pressure because pressure itself is not having any impact on the system. So why do we waste our energy on increasing or decreasing or changing any pressure? We just keep it as atmospheric pressure and we carry on all our experiments under the room temperature. Since the degree of freedom in such cases is reduced by 1, therefore the equation will be. Now the degrees of freedom is reduced by 1 and let us see the new form of equation. F is equals to C minus P plus 1. The general equation of the phase rule is F is equals to C minus P plus 2. 
but over here instead of writing plus 2 I am writing plus 1 over here why because it is a reduced phase rule the phase rule is to be decreased by 1 and that's the reason why we write f is equals to c minus p plus 1 the reduced phase rule is more convenient to apply to a solid liquid two component condensed system examples over here are pb and sb ag and pb we just did ag and pb that is silver and lead and zn and cd zinc and cadmium systems to complete temperature concentration that is tc phase phase diagram of the system that is the lead silver system is given let us see the phase diagram of it this is the phase diagram over here we do not have pressure as we saw it there is concentration there is temperature and over here there are different temperatures see the temperature is going till 961 degrees celsius and yet there is no sight of any gaseous form there is no curve for the gaseous form over here we have different curves that is ao and OB we also have different areas over here and let us just see the names of those curves in the phase diagram of PBAG system there are the following salient features the first is the curve AO that is freezing curve of AG let us see this in the phase diagram so over here this is my curve AO curve and this is known as the freezing curve of AG and this O is the eutectic point. Over here, I have the OB curve. OB curve, what OB stands for? It is the freezing curve of PB. This point O is known as the eutectic point. We'll study this point in detail. So we have this AO, OB and eutectic point over here. So the salient features over here are curve AO, curve BO, eutectic point O and area AOB. We'll study all of these in detail in the further sessions. So we are in today's session, we studied about the lead silver system. We studied the different components of it, the phases of it. We applied the phase rule to it and we understood that a normal phase rule does not work on it because it's a special kind of system. And we applied the reduced order condensed form of the phase rule. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.